Hey everyone, welcome. We're going to do some review on object-oriented programming, which is up in my GitHub under this file right here, as well as objects and I.O., which you can get on this one here. So eight and nine, let's get started. So going back to when we just started object-oriented programming, we created literally the most basic class that had absolutely nothing defined in it. But this class can still be used to make objects of type book. So book is a variable that refers to a book object. And we print that and you can see that right here. It's a book object and then the memory address. When you print the type of book, you can see it's of type book. We can check the type dynamically using is instance. So we pass in the book variable and check to see if it's of type book. And you can see it says it is indeed a book, read it. Using this class, you can create numerous books. So here we create book two, we set it a title. And this is interesting because we can actually set the attributes after we create the object. So we just add a title to this book and we print that title and it comes out right here. But since every book has a title, it would make more sense to put this as part of the structure, which we show you how to do by creating this method here called underscore underscore init underscore underscore. And this requires a self parameter. We don't have to actually pass anything to that. It's implicit. That refers to the object. So we are setting the object's title like so. And this title here is what we actually pass in. So when we create a book, we pass in that title and it gets assigned to the attribute title on that object. So we can print book title and book two title, which gives us this right here. Now, if you were to try to create one without a title, we get an error. So that's why that's commented out. You can also give it a default if you want. So we defaulted it to none. And in that situation, you don't have to give it a title and doing this will print none. This is different than trying to get a field that doesn't exist because for example, if we tried to print this book.test, it would fail because dot test doesn't exist. So title exists, it just doesn't have a value. So it's like a slight distinction there, but just make sure you understand that. Getting book.title is okay, we just get the value none. Getting book.test or anything that doesn't exist, that's gonna give us an error. Next up, we talked about creating our own methods in the class, and to do that, we just define a function like usual, and we put the self implicit parameter in the parameter list. Here we created a log method, which just prints to the console. We also did an is short method, which will print true or false depending on how long the book is. So when we create a book that's 72 pages and we check to see if it's short, it's going to say read the book because it's actually less than 100 pages. So that's why it says read book down here. Next up, I got some other code in here, but nothing too important. What we're going to do now is look at class level variables. And in this situation, the variables are tied to the class level. And in this situation, the variables are accessible through the class. So for example, I have this faves list. You can access this by saying book.faves, and then we can append data to it, like so, where we append book and book2. Printing that, and we get this default output here. That refers to the first book object, and this is the second book object. Next up, we talk about how to replace those default outputs with a new, and that is using the str override. So that's going to look like this here, where we actually return the title and the number of pages. While we're at it, we also replace the equals method, which will compare the fields self.title is equal to other.title and self.pages is equal to other.pages. If they all match, then we will return true, otherwise we return false. I don't want to get into it a whole lot in this review because it was a lot of information. So if you want that, go check out my video on hashing. But for this class, I'd probably just go with this underscore underscore hash underscore underscore is equal to none, which this just explicitly states that book objects are not to be used for hashing data structures and you can't get the hash of the object. All right, then we go through some more examples where now we take a book and we print it and we get the output that we created, which is the book title and the number of pages long. We can also compare books. So we have another book. It's a different book object, same data, and they are considered true. Are they the same object though? You can check that with is and it is false. So that is our introduction on object-oriented programming. Next up, I want to talk about working with these objects. 
So that is in the 09 file. So if you wanna get that up on GitHub, you can. That's gonna be right here. Very first thing in here is we just create this class again because we're gonna use that throughout. So same exact thing as the class in the previous file. And then we just start working with these objects by passing them to functions. So here we have a function that modifies the title. And when we do this, the change is seen outside. So we change the title to something else and we print it on the outside down here and you can see the change persists. So functions can change object data. Then we go through this with a little bit more detail of printing the ID and you can see the ID is the same every single occurrence. Then what we do is we do a variation where we're actually reassigning the parameter. So inside of the function, we are assigning a new book. And when we print this data now, we're going to get a different number. We pretty much replaced that object with a different one. Those changes do not persist. So the original book title, Are You My Mother, is what's going to show up when we print it on the outside here. So in other words, functions can change object data, but they cannot assign new objects. Next up, we talk a little bit about reading from files. So we open a file, input.txt with the append option. That's going to create it if it's not there. Then we open that file with a write, which will overwrite anything in that file. We write some data. So we write, are you my mother? With a tab, 72, a new line, and then another book down here. So that file is going to look like this here. And now what we do is we read from this file, split the data and print it, which gives us this right here. This is where it gets a little bit complicated in terms of parsing, and you could do this in literally millions of different ways. I just decided to structure it this way. You can decide to structure it another way, but pretty much we split this first string into its components of Are You My Mother and 72 pages long. And the way you do that is you grab that first list element, split it by the tab, and then create a new book with that data. We do the same thing with book two, so you can see that there. Then what we do is we print book and book two, which is where this output comes from. Cool beans. Next up, we talked about exception handling. So ideally for an actual production application, you put a lot of stuff inside of a try. And then if an exception is raised, you can catch that exception by putting accept and then some exception type and optionally, well actually the type is optional here as well. You could just put accept colon, but you can catch a specific type and even give it a name to reference it in here. So this does not exist. So an exception is gonna be raised and we get file not found, error, and this right here. Additionally, we can be very specific on what type of exception we wanna to catch to do different things. So in this situation, we would imagine a good amount of code in this try block and we're catching all different types for whatever could possibly happen. Most of this is dealing with file IO, so file not found, OS error, which actually this inherits from that, so it's just a more general version. And then some other stuff in here, and then lastly, exception, which is very general. And then a finally to close the file if an exception happens during the parsing, which actually would because we're parsing it to an integer, which isn't gonna work. So it says cannot parse data, check file, and this always runs, which comes from the finally. Next up, we talk about the with keyword, and I'm just gonna touch on this real quickly because we just talked about that, but essentially you can have your file automatically closed for you, and even if an exception happens within the open indentation, the file will still be closed. You'll probably still be using tries and accepts if you're trying to do things properly, but you never have to worry about that file staying open. And it's usually not a huge concern, but it is just considered best practice to close that file anytime you open it. So here's how you can check to see if it's closed just to prove to you that it does in fact close by line 145. And that's where this true comes from. And lastly, I just talk about opening the file itself can throw an exception. So here is two different ways of dealing with that. This one would catch pretty much any exception, either from opening the file or once the file is open, or what I showed you in the previous video, which would separate those out. So we could catch an exception if it fails to open, then we could do another try inside of the else here 
if we wanted to just deal with errors from parsing or whatever else we might be doing here. So, wow, that is a lot of information. And honestly, I can't cover all of that in just this quick review. So hopefully that was not just total brain barf and that you actually got something from that and solidified it in your brain. Stay tuned for the next video because we're going to start talking about databases and I am literally stoked. I'm excited. So stay tuned. Be sure to subscribe and I'll see you then.